Good morning, my beautiful loves, and welcome back to Daily J. Today, I am going to be speaking about the new Spider-Man movie. Now, I watched it last night for the very first time, and I've been putting off watching it because it kind of felt a little bit like marvelly, like a little bit, I don't know, I just thought it was going to be super cliche and full of like propaganda and just brainwash me not in a fun way. And then a friend or like someone that I've kind of just met, she's in one of my like mentoring groups. Um, she talked about watching it and I was like, okay, it was kind of like that tick of recommendation from someone that was in a space that I really respect and admire. And so I, yeah, I watched it last night and I was blown away. Like I was actually blown away in terms of like, as a film, wouldn't highly recommend it. It was really slow. In my opinion, it was really slow to start and the storyline felt way too rushed. It was like jumping from one thing to the next. I didn't know what I was supposed to be focusing on. And it took a long time for me to really get into the meat of the film and to actually like engage me. Um, what I loved though, and what I was so taken by was this idea of illusions and truth. And how, as I was watching it, I was like, yes, 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 yes. Like, this is what I speak about. And this is what I talk about. When we talk about seeing through the illusions and seeing through the chaos and actually being able to know what's true in our lives and what's real and see through the BS, like see through the bullshit of fear, see through the bullshit of chaos, see through the bullshit of like these giant flying monsters in our lives and get to the heart of what's real. And there was one scene where, oh, that scene where like Peter Parker is going through, this is total spoilers. So if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, I don't even care, but total spoilers as Peter's going through this like massive big initiation with um, Mysterio, I think his name is, he is like, he's coming up against, he's in this world of illusion, right? Mysterio is creating, projecting, literally projecting all these illusions into Peter's consciousness and his surrounding like field. So all he's seeing is like things that are terrifying. Like he's, he's being dropped from like a really high height. One of my favorite bits is where he thinks he's, he shoots his like spidey web to something to like pull it away. And he ends up pulling like a giant crane down on top of him or what looks like a giant crane. And it was like, oh my gosh, like it's so wild. He like thinks he's running into something and he ends up running off something. He like falls from a giant height and then like is chasing the chick that he wants to save and ends up like running smack into a, like a glass wall. And it's just like, it's this big, beautiful, like fuck fest <laughs> of, of illusions and chaos. And like, he has no idea which way is up. He has no idea what's real. And he ends up like, there's this, the climax of what I think is the climax is when he's in this hall of mirrors. And it's like, he's just being surrounded by reflections of what he thinks is reflections of himself. And they're all like, then like Mysterio actually uses his voice to voice over these like terrible things. Like he's saying like, if you were good enough, this wouldn't be happening. Or if you were good enough, she'd be safe or something like that. And like, it's kind of like, he's basically like saying Spider-Man's worst fears in his own voice, in Spider-Man's own voice over these like projections of his own reflection. So it's like, you get why this illusion, and when I talk about persistent illusions, you get why this illusion would be so deep and why it would be like, why it's so convincing when we're in it, when we're talking about things like addiction, when we're talking about like depression, when you're in a voice or when like the voices that you think are your inner voice are saying those things to you, you get why it's really convincing, right? Like the illusion can be very, very, persistent and like he's looking at his own reflection like of course you're gonna think that's real and there's this moment in it's actually not in the spider-man movie but there's this moment in um if you guys have seen the divergent series when tris is in um this giant she's going through again a massive initiation I'm very much mirroring what I'm going through in my life at the moment. Another big up level and initiation. It's really cool um, and scary and terrifying. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's like, ugh. it's breaking me apart, but I'm trying to relax into it. So it feels more like an expansion rather than like a tearing apart. And I've realized that like, yeah, it's, it's hard guys. It's really fucking hard. Um, but one of the things that I'm realizing, okay, we'll come back to that later. 
Tris is like in the middle of, I think it's one of her final tests to check whatever, but she she's like in this big glass cube and it's filling with water, a glass case of emotion, and it's filling with water. And she like is like freaking out and she's like tapping on the glass and then she remembers that it's an illusion and she can create whatever she wants in this realm. And so she taps on the glass and it cracks and it breaks and all the water spills out and boom, she's into the next phase, like the next stage of her journey through this initiation. And it reminded me of that, like this scene in Spider-Man when he's looking at the glass and this is what we all, this is what I have done to kind of like break through the illusion or what I think of when I'm moving through fear is literally like, I'm trying to get the camera, tap, 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 tap. Like I remember that I'm tapping on the glass and that the glass can break. The illusion can shatter and everything can fall away and I can remember what's real. And I don't know. I just, I hope that helps you. I know this is going to help you um, with whatever you're moving through right now. What I will add to that is it's not always as easy as that. Like it's not always as easy as being like, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. Like, I, you know, I'm, it's not real because the emotions are attached to the illusion and so there's that great bit in spider-man the one i just watched where he's about to fly into um the middle of this giant big scary wave not even a wave monster like a, a cyclone monster and he's like it's not real it's not real it's not real and he's like preparing himself to go into the middle of like to fly into the middle of this thing and you know it's not always that fucking easy to be like i'm just gonna fly into the middle of it it takes, it's taken me so many years, you guys, to have the courage, to build up the courage, to walk into the middle of an illusion. And even now I still like sometimes like pull back and I'm like, ah, ah, and I'll be like walking, walking, walking. And then I'll be like, shoop, sideswipe. And, it, but it's, you know, it's every time we do it. And every time you do it, you walk into the, like you face what like terrifies you or like what makes you feel awkward and uncomfortable with like your shoulders, like square. And you're just like, I'm going to fucking face this no matter what happens. I love myself. I can do this. Every time you do that, your like your courage gets a little bit, um, it gets a little bit easier, and you just get a little bit more um, like brave and a little bit less scared. So, yeah. But it was fascinating. I was watching this movie, being like, "There's so many cool codes in here." Like the yeah, the illusions, um, the idea of like that we can project. Like oh, that's what was cool when Peter went in and started like destroying the drones. I don't know. There was one section where I was like, that's what it looks like to deprogram your subconscious mind and to go into your unconscious and like fix the bugs and look at the bugs. I can't, I'll, hopefully it'll come to me, but if not, it doesn't matter. You'll maybe you'll pick it up. Maybe you won't, but there's a specific part in the movie where he like, I think it's when he goes into the middle of the illusion and he can see all the drones from the inside. He can see it from the inside out. And I'm like, oh, this is what it looks like to actually delve into your subconscious and see the, the, like, see the root cause of these things that are being projected. So for example, if all I'm seeing is like a giant scary monster of rejection or people like a fear of people rejecting me, and that's my like fire monster over here to dive into the middle of the illusion and see the drone that's creating that and projecting that, that specific drone might be this belief that I, you know, created when I was four years old and I expressed myself to my mom and she, you know, like blew me off or whatever. Like she didn't give me the, the approval or the validation that I needed in that moment or that I wanted in that moment. And so I decided that like, I am unworthy of acceptance by other people. And therefore I've just carried that with me throughout my entire life. And that, but that's like how it happens, right? Like that drone, that specific drone you've created and you've been carrying it your whole life and it's creating this projection into the world and into your life of what like of that belief and it's making this big scary monster and like the drone itself like in the movie the drones can actually cause a lot of chaos and destruction and the ironic huh, this is interesting like the ironic thing is like yeah they can actually like your beliefs can cause a lot of chaos and destruction and the illusion like what makes the illusion appear so real and what makes you buy into it and everyone's believing it because like, it's not just that they can see this thing. It's that this thing is like crashing down buildings and blowing up cars and killing people. Right. Like it's, 
chaos and what happens in our lives and this is when we get things like you know just like addiction or you destroy a relationship or you burn a bridge or whatever like there is actual carnage and collateral damage from these beliefs that are like these drones and that are installed in your system that are creating these projections and it's not that like it doesn't mean that the big scary monster the belief is real right it just means that you it has power to create chaos because you haven't gone in and reprogrammed the drone and if you had like the peter parker glasses or the um iron man glasses the tony stark glasses to be able to then take control see through the illusion oh this is cool this is just coming to me now see through the illusion and be like oh hello hello illusion and then like reprogram it so that it's not like fucking up the world anymore you're like okay drones off that's when you can go in and you can reprogram them and you can be like, hey, Edith, or like, hey, subconscious, we're going to reprogram it so that I know that I'm worthy of love regardless of what happens. And I know that I'm worthy of acceptance in the world um, or in myself first and then in the world. And then your drone all of a sudden is like, oh, I'm a happy, peaceful drone. And I'm going to like, let's, you know, it's not even like, it's almost like the projection then turns off, but then you can use the drone to like, I don't know, I did an aerial photo shoot like the other day. So maybe we do some aerial photography with the drone. Like it's just, it's new, it's new beliefs. And you start to see the world like what's real, like this is real and this is real. And it's not just like these smoke and mirror endeavors that are like being projected out from like fantasies or trauma. Um, and you start to like anchor into the present moment of what's real. And I, yeah, I've like, <laughs> there is, so I've, <laughs> I've, fucked this up so many times and I've like just had so many failed attempts at doing this like reprogramming my mind and overcoming my fears and you know I've succeeded and I've failed and I've succeeded and I've failed and it's like I still feel like there's things in my life sometimes where I'm yeah coming from like an old projector that's like a really shitty belief and I'm like projecting that out into the world and then I'm like buying into it by literally like chasing, you know, chasing my tail or chasing a white rabbit that goes nowhere. Um, and that's okay. Like it is, it's, it's actually okay. Because at the end of the day, like this, you guys, this whole thing is one giant game, right? And you can't lose, like you can't lose the game. If you die, you just come back again if you want to. Um, and you'll have like more experience, you'll have more wisdom, you'll have like more learning under your belt. So there's no way to, and even if you like destroy entire cities in your wake and you destroy relationships and whatever, you can always like rebuild them or you can just start again. Like there is nothing that you could ever, ever do that kicks you like out of the game, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, you can, it, like it's all good. Like that's what I'll say. It is all good. Decidedly, assuredly, I'm certain it is all good everything is working out for your highest good. Um, cause even if sometimes like that's what it takes sometimes for me, it was like, Oh, okay. Like I've destroyed three entire cities and like, I'm like, you know, destroying relationships and destroying my life. And I had to actually see the destruction to have like, find the motivation or like have peak my curiosity to be like, I wonder why I'm doing this. And when you like, when you rid yourself of the shame, that's when it's so much easier to like go inward and be like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm going to not believe the story that says that there's something wrong with me and said, I am going to believe the story that I am worthy of transformation. I am a worthwhile human being, obviously. I'm amazing. I'm phenomenal. I am worthy of love and respect and attention, all the things that I desire. And I am worthy of creating out of, like, I'm worthy of seeing the truth. And I'm worthy of living in alignment with the truth. Oh, rah, chills. That feels really good. That feels really good. All right. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I have not posted a YouTube video in a very long time. But the other day I had this thought where I was like, if I was on my deathbed, all I would do, and I said this to my mom, I was like, if I was on my deathbed, all I would do would be to um, set up a camera and just live stream, like all day, every day. And um, just tell the world what I know and tell the world like what I'm learning and share my experiences and share my wisdom because that's what I love to do. And it would feel, it also would feel very important that I like got it all out and I like said it all before I died. So 
whether that's a premonition of like a, a death that's coming for me, not like a physical, my body dying, I'm going to live a very long, long, happy and healthy life. But as Jay Schaefer, but like the, um, like the identity death, like my, the death of the ideas about who I think I am, which is, you know, the, the dying alive that I talk about a lot, or I'm going to have talked about sometimes. Um, but dying to love, which is like the, who I think I am, my ideas about myself, my identity transforms and I like become new or I don't even become new, but like my perceptions of myself change. So the way that I show up changes. So everything in my life changes. So yeah, like everything else becomes new, but it's not like, I don't know. I'm still just as worthy like here as I am now, as I will be in 10 years when I, you know, cr have created 50 billion new identities between now and then. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just explained that really well. I'm proud of myself. That was exciting. And I'm excited to look back at this video in 10 years and be like, eek, Baby J, Baby J, so cute, so cute Baby J. All right, <laughs> um, this was really fun. I love you guys. Um, and yeah, this was a good time. I shall see you in my next video. I love you. <laughs> Bye.